Hey guys, this video is brought to you by Linode. If you guys are looking for a cloud hosting company with a great reputation, low prices, and all the freedom that you need to build whatever it is you want, I would recommend you check them out. They have pricing points that pretty much suit, suit anybody from an individual developer to large companies that are looking to really scale their operations. Linode has data centers all over the world. They've been around for over 15 years now, and they're the largest privately held cloud hosting company out there. Hey guys, what's up? All right, so in this video, what I'm gonna be talking about is the overall state of web development. We always talk about like, what is the hottest tools? Some new JavaScript library comes out, React comes out with React hooks, and everybody's like, man, it's gonna be a game changer. We're gonna do everything all new. Uh, it's gonna help us so much. We have things like Tailwind, we have Webpack and Babel. We have Angular, Vue. We have all these different web technologies. We have these server-side stacks that are now sprung up. We have Node.js. So, like, I could go on and on. The web development field uh, is just obviously like riddled with all these new flavor of the month, shiny little objects that we always like infatuate ourselves with and want to pick up on and learn. And, um, and the excitement I don't think has ever dwindled down the entire time I've been developing. So 10 years, uh, 10 years ago, like we were talking about like Django and Ruby on rails were like the future and like that there was, everything was going to be on that. And, uh, the big question was like, can they scale and all this stuff? And like, um, it's, just, it's like a funny world that we live in. Right. I mean, so I, I can look back and I can now see like 10 years of development done a lot of different types of technology. We've, we've seen things come along like coffee script that made us write our JavaScript in different ways. And then it dies out and dwindles down. We've seen like Babel come along so that we can write more modern JavaScript and, uh, and tap into the more uh, futuristic aspects of the JavaScript language, I suppose, to make us more productive and uh, to make us write better applications and things like that. The funny thing that stayed true about web development all this time is that it really all it, it all boils down to HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and it has always been that case, uh, at least for the last twenty years. And our server side languages they come and go. You know, you got Java Spring. A lot of people don't want to touch that. Uh, Perl used to run Amazon.com, and nobody wants to touch that. Um, it, it's like obviously Python, Django. There's just so many different technologies. And what I want to show you guys in this video is like. A kind of like a before and after of some of the most popular websites that are out there, just a few examples, and then just compare them to what they looked like uh, approximately eight years ago or more, and just kind of see the differences. Like we have videos that come out and we talk about web design trends and, you know, we're using curve buttons and then we use square buttons and then we back to curve buttons and that, you know, and then we go back to square and now we're like, you know, you get dark mode and like large fonts and all this stuff and like, um, we're just like doing the same thing over and over again. And I think this video is going to kind of showcase that. So let me just jump into this. Like here's stackoverflow.com. This is what it looks like right now. Um, I would say it's a pretty polished site. This is ASP.NET C sharp using SQL server. It's pretty not, it's pretty much .NET, uh, to the core. And then when we compare it, and this is one of the ones in the example that I think, um, does look a little bit different, but not a whole lot. When we compare it all the way back to 2011, so nearly 10 years ago, it kind of looks the same. Like, yeah, we're using square buttons and we didn't have CSS selectors to kind of curve those buttons. We used to have to use images back in those days. That was a real pain in the ass. In fact, um, yeah, we didn't have pseudo selectors. We didn't have before and after selectors and all that stuff. We, we used images and like it was, it was garbage. Like we had like a span that would do the left side of the, uh, the curved image and and then we'd have to mess with the margins of padding to make it butt up against the actual square portion of it and then put an end cap on it. Um, but we used to hack stuff together like that. And in fact, back in 2011, we were still hacking websites together with HTML tables. So it was only supposed to be for tabular data. But if you wanted like, you know, a big background image, like if you want a lot of images on your site, and make it look really, you know, like really stand out, um, you used HTML tables. The problem was like, it was not scalable in the slightest. So it was good for like your typical landing page for one particular product or something, but you couldn't scale it at all. Now, here is Twitter. And Twitter is, I think, one of the ones who are responsible for really changing the entire landscape of development. Back in 2012, I remember the biggest buzzword as a developer, especially a UI web developer, was responsive web design. So that's when media queries started being picked up on. People started talking about 
how you could use media queries instead of sniffing out the user agent to figure out if somebody's on you know, Safari or Mozilla or, or Chrome. Uh, if Chrome was even out then, I don't remember. Uh, but like you had to sniff out user agents and then you were delivering up different CSS for those user agents. And we would also try to detect like Android and iOS and stuff like that. And it was really hard because you had to write a bunch of different CSS files and um, maintain all that crap. And, and then we found out that, okay, you can use CSS media queries and tap into that and it could detect the actual physical width of the device, whether depending, it didn't matter what operating system or what browser you were using. We could just look at the width of your device and then render CSS in one single CSS file and get it to all work in a responsive fashion. So that's what we see now. Uh, many years later. So that was kind of, I think, a big buzzword in 2011, 2012. When we look at Twitter all the way back to 2013, um, this was after the advent of, uh, of Bootstrap. And Bootstrap was like a relatively new thing. But I'd say that, you know, Twitter kind of looks the same. I mean, the buttons are a little bit different or whatever, but it kind of boils down to the fact that like, it's still just HTML form inputs, like it's CRUD applications. It's the same shit that we're trying to solve. And it's been the same shit for 20 years. But we added all this tooling and complexity to our jobs. And our salaries have risen, which is nice. I mean, because all these tools and everything working in harmony together is an absolute nightmare, especially because we still work on different operating systems. You have a lot of people on Windows and Mac and Linux. And a lot of people using different browsers and all that stuff even now. And like, there's just no, there's no really consensus. I think that, you know, jQuery was obviously a thing. Um, I think jQuery and Bootstrap are probably two of the biggest things I've seen to kind of solidify the web development field. Uh, and then a third to that probably is going to be uh, React. I think React is uh, something that was not the first thing on the block, but it was something that did it a lot better than everybody else when it came to uh, managing your views. However, a uh, modern day React application is an absolute nightmare. I mean, you have to know, if you want to use Create React app, you better know about ES6 and ES7 and uh, some of the latest features of JavaScript. You got to know about JSX. You have a basic Hello World application, like this is Create React app. And if you look at all the different dependencies that we have in our node modules here, there's literally 38,000 files for a Hello World application. And it's 212 megabyte of data of just code and configuration files and all kinds of shit all just bundled together to output some basic HTML. So I find that interesting, right? Here's another example. This is what CNN looks like right now. And CNN's just, uh, it's a popular news website, been around for a long time. Here's what it looks like nearly 10 years ago. Damn, it looks pretty similar. Like, yeah, the boxes, again, you don't have the curvature or whatever. You got some weird stuff. Like, they were using Google search engine. I remember that was a thing for a while where you could, like, put Google search inside your, your, your web page. And it would basically just index all the web pages on your website and then just, like, serve up uh, some info on them based on what they already had about your website. But uh, it's, I think it's interesting. But... This website, it, you know, it's all the same thing, man. They, they had videos back then nearly 10 years ago. A um, lot of links and stuff and not a huge difference. Here's Lowe's.com, one of the largest home improvement stores in the United States. And I guess they're probably around the world too. But, um, you know, pretty basic site, right? I mean, it's an e-commerce platform. And it, has, it serves the purpose of showing you products and trying to sell you those products. And then when we look at it uh, about, about eight years ago, eight years ago, looks the same. So how could that be? How could we have all this tooling and all this shit that makes, this e it, makes it easier to write HTML and CSS and these DOM manipulations and all this stuff? Like, it's kind of the same. Like, and, and like here, the, the menus are a little bit like, I would say more sudden, and that's because they're using CSS. So instead of like bringing in Bootstrap and a bunch of JavaScript and stuff, it's using CSS on Hover. And uh, I mean, but but overall, it serves the same purpose, right? It's it's quite interesting. Now here's Amazon.com. Amazon.com was uh, a site that was originally an online bookstore, 
created by Jeff Bezos, who was already a millionaire before he even started this company. And they used Pearl initially. So Pearl was like a, a big, in fact, when I was learning Pearl in 2011, 2012, well, 2011, um, the biggest thing about Pearl was like, oh, Amazon uses it. And I don't know that they still do, but um, anyway, like uh, the, the biggest e-commerce platform out there is amazon.com. And then when we look at it eight years ago, kind of looks the same. Like, I mean, there's slight variations, right? But I guess the point that I'm trying to drill home here is that it's all about some of this stuff is like they're just cash problems on the Wayback Machine here. But um, it, it's all the same fundamental principles of CRUD applications, meaning create, read, update, and delete. You have HTTP calls that are, make, uh, that are made out to the server to do that. The UI itself, no matter how much tooling and all this stuff that we have available to us, we're still trying to solve the same problems. Do I have an image that's like this large or that large? Do I put padding? Do I have bigger fonts? Do I have some gradients? Do I make like some sort of dark theme or bigger banners and carousels and, and all that stuff, man? And like, are we really getting anywhere with all that? I'm not really sure. I know I'm getting paid to do this stuff, so I have no problem with it. I mean, we just, um, we just create new tools and uh, I think the good news for all of you guys out there, though, that, that might be overwhelmed with learning how to code is that the end game is, is pretty much just the same. So it doesn't matter if you didn't catch up on the latest JavaScript library or whatever. It's all about HTML, CSS, and JavaScript and building web applications. And in my opinion, it's about being a full stack developer because that's what's going to make your mileage go further than anything. A lot of these coding boot camps and stuff, they're focusing on react or angular because that's where the, the need is because there's a very specific angular slash react way of doing things depending on which one you use but i wouldn't focus all my time and attention on that i would be very focused on and what i've been focused on in my career is like how do i actually buy a domain name how do i set up a server how do i deal with apache virtual hosts and things like that um how do i deal with uploading files how do i keep track of like different versions of my products or, or projects and um and overall like how do i set up a web framework how do i read from a database like all those questions are all the same problems we've been trying to solve all this time and it seems like some of the latest tooling isn't really helping us in that regard now here's this website uh that i have code hawk right this website right here, I decided to not use any framework whatsoever. And I might change my mind at some point, but this thing is doing online sales. And it's got video that's like not hosting on Shopify or any of that other stuff. Because I used Shopify for a while, but I was like so limited to their platform, which is using Ruby on Rails. And they have like their own template engine. And I was constantly battling against that. And I said, F it. On this one, I'm using Linode as my web server. And I use Apache and it's got HTTPS, which I use with uh, Let's Encrypt. And then I simply just have HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And that, that's all I'm using right now. Uh, I'll probably change that in the future. But for right now, it's a very basic site. It does one specific purpose. And I decided not to mess with things. Even though I know how to do Django, I know how to set up like Mongo and, and get all that stuff working together. Those are headaches that sometimes we don't need. You know, it's like a lot of these tools that we now spend so much time on or even create react app like yeah i do like the fact that create a react app it abstracts away a lot of like webpack and babble and getting all that stuff configured and everything the problem is though is if you're going to use those tools it's a really good idea to be familiar with how that stuff works so like when i did tutorials on typescript and react that's uh free on youtube I made sure that i spent you know the time it was like 45 minutes of doing the configuration and some people were like well why do i need that I could just use create a React app, but then you got 38,000 files and 212 megabyte of data, and you have no idea what's going on under the covers. All right, here's the last example I'm going to show uh, for right now. Here is uh, Rotten Tomatoes, and this is a movie website. I think it's owned by CBS. It was originally started by a brother and sister, and this is one of those uh, successful movie sites that sort of inspired me to create my own movie website because I just liked watching movies at the time, and like I felt like kind of a movie buff person type of thing. I watch more movies than I than TV shows. And uh, granted, though, the last few years, I just, I, I don't follow up on all the, the movies anymore or anything. But uh, anyway, I felt like I had a, a relative interest in it. And that is something that I will also tell you guys, like you can spend a lot of time on a business 
idea. But if you're not truly passionate about it and you don't have much to say about it and you don't really, really enjoy working on it, like I didn't really, really like enjoying uh, writing up bios and stuff on actors and, and movies and plots and like reviews. I, that got boring really quick because like I don't want to be a movie reviewer. I never wanted to be really. Uh, and in fact, I never did. And like it was just like this idea that I was like, well, maybe I can do it better than other people. And I quickly realized that um, you're up against a, a hell of a thing there now because you have to be passionate about what you're doing. All right. And then here is Rotten Tomatoes uh, eight years ago. Their layout is is exactly the same. Like their top movies on the left hand side, nothing's changed for eight years. And like, why is that? This is one of the most popular websites that makes, at least with, when it comes to movies, and it's it's the same thing. It serves the same purpose. And like, no amount of like Tailwind or React or any of that stuff. Like, well, maybe well, even React, even something like this. You don't have that dynamic of a dom document object model to like warrant something like react having to deal with some incredibly complex state machine using redux or like axios or any of that like you could just say you know screw it i'm gonna go with bootstrap html javascript maybe bring in like even jquery who knows like it like so much of the stuff that we bring in is like it seems like it's just not needed um and that's why I kind of bitched on that one React video. I was just like, why are we re rewriting everything over and over again? Um, and why didn't we kind of do this from the first? And like no project is, is perfect when you first uh, bring it out. But it just seems like we kind of create loops uh, or we create hoops to jump through. And in a way, like it's good because the industry grows, the complexity grows and our jobs and stability kind of grows. But uh the it, it, the overall concept of all this stuff is just html css and javascript it's not like dealing with virtual reality or, or new graphics engines or like the new open uh gl successor i don't remember what that's called but like you know there's certain things that come along and they're very transformational but when it comes to web and the browsers and stuff like even though the browsers have much bigger capabilities it seems like we're not doing a whole lot different with it but we are creating a whole lot more complexity.